What is the deal, Reapers? Y'all know what day it is. It's Savage Saturday, baby. It's Savage Saturday. Y'all know. Gangs! Gangs. I beat my meat. 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 Hoes on my dick. Can they all want a piece? Bitch, I beat my meat. I go ham. I eat ass, I'm never starving, god damn I beat my meat Turn me up, that's my jam I go fuck Beyonce, but I'd rather use my hand Damn Bitch, I beat my meat, I take my dick out on a date I... Gangs Oh, y'all know what day it is <laughs> My man Munchie Mike's is in the building, man Welcome Gangs, to the... baby, gangs Welcome, Reapers Welcome to the Savage Saturday vlog, guys You know how we do this, man it's a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of eating, a whole lot whole of lot of us, whole lot of game. A whole lot. All right. <laughs> we got a two-mile run from this uh, little-ass apartment all the way to the gym. Then we are going to do some HIT training, high-intensity interval training. Game training. Game training. And then we are going to stuff our face with, like, what are we eating today, dog? A whole lot of gangs. This is true. I want to get, we're going to get back to y'all on, on the food. Just understand we got some, some major snacks coming in the building. So, uh, let's get this going, man. Okay. Okay. So, Reapers, my dumb ass forgot uh, the, the actual demon juice. So, you know what I mean? Me and Munchie Mike, we're about to go take this trip real quick to go cop that. All right. So, after some technical difficulties, we finally have attained the demon juice. God damn it. And... As soon as we get back to the crib, we about to fucking get to running. Ooh. So, shit start off. There you go. I was going to say. Yeah. Put the gang in here. My bad. Reaper Concept. He's going to tape some onto it. So, look at that. You're going to have your yeah. own pre-workout Reaper workout. Uh oh. So. Ooh, that sounded that sound like, sound like a goddamn promotion right there. That sounded like some oh. shit. <laughs> Giants, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Holding down for something. I fucking hate y'all, Giants. <laughs> God damn it. That motherfucker's been breaking my heart. Why can I just not have a good fucking fall without being suicidal? Why? <laughs> don't take that literal look. Don't tell no Marine Corps people that. That's <laughs> 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 that was a joke, goddamn. <laughs> I wonder why I come to my crib. Fucking. Uh. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Oh, damn. You take that to the head. I didn't know it was like that, Reapers. Damn, this shit's serious. Wait, I had a, I had a shaker bottle. <laughs> oh, you wow! <laughs> wow, wow! <laughs> I don't want to do no shaker bottles out here, man. Damn! <laughs> Alright, well, you mind if I get a scoop? Cause I'm, okay, about, to, yeah. I'm about to shake a bottle this shit up. <laughs> we'll put Ooh. this all up inside of here. Ah. All up inside. Ugh. Ooh. We'll put the scoop back. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You got a water bottle too? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even see you put this up. Whew. Yeah, you wild now. I did that once and I <clears throat> choked. I feel great. <laughs> I might have a heart attack after this. <laughs> chug, 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 <laughs> chug, chug. Right, Gangs. Testing out this new blender bottle from Walmart with the little round the cap. I don't know how I feel about that. Big facts. See that shit? Oh, yeah. shit. The round cap instead. Walmart always got some weird shit in this damn thing, man. Yeah. Because maybe the pre-workout or like whatever you mix and don't stay under there on the little corners. Big facts. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. That's some, that's some, that's some. Woo! Woo! Motivation right there, dog. Woo! We about to get some games. Oh, y'all about to see a lot of a lot of carnage at this at this gym. Damn. I'm about to witness a lot of um. Yeah, we about to ask, yo, we... Woo! Happy Fridays, Reapers. Happy Friday. Oh, oh wait, oh, Saturday. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> Happy Saturday. Hey, hey nigga, get ready. You got me laughing. Gotcha. 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 I ain't with the real niggas, yeah. I ain't with no foo foo ass niggas, man. Scott, that what? That what? That what? I'm smoking on the Tuga pack, yeah, I'm happy. Got the fucking 50 in the Mac, I will wet you quick. Good D, he a switch D's if you ain't rockin' with. Man, I say free, all the guys, they all some foo foo shit. All wanna goofy with me, so don't hang on me. Got the fucking 30 on me, and it ain't hard to see. You saw me on no 60, what my fucking team? Take 600 to LA, and see they up the fucking stage. Who the fuck is Rico? He get my desert ego. When he say BK, I think he fuck with Jojo. All fuck what the fool gave yeah, these niggas fool gay. Yeah. Can't yeah. rob for they fucking say these niggas fucking lame. Call up my nigga Fat Boy Chubbs, he up on everything. These rappers, they really rappers. I am just a seller. I do this, cause I do this, cause I want to. Take money, he gon' let it spray, and I just want to. Ride around on two good day, well, like one. That's a nigga said, two gang, and we gon' murder you. Back you niggas said they heard of me, but I ain't heard you. Back Get the fuck up out my fucking face, for I act a fool. A thousand for a pizza, you can call my phone. Whole time I went up, cause I dropped the cup. That's so hot for niggas saying, Tatiana's, we say EE. -E. E -E. We don't want no fucking sex, tell that bitch to EE. -E. So, we just finished dying. I know what time it is now. Let's have some food. Clapping Reapers. Finally got this goddamn food, man. I'm hurting. Bull curtain. <laughs> and if y'all see the workout, all this food is definitely game today. That's what I'm about. Wow, bro. I thought they was going to just chant. What they do to you? Niggas gave me a. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I said two sauces. Niggas put it in the side. Like, put on the wings, bro. No way. I swear to God. Did, did, did they at least put it in your sauce? Nah. Oh, hell. How no. you going? What the fuck is the point of me having a separate. I guarantee you. Now, watch all these. Watch all the wings in here got, got the same sauce. Why the hell would I combine them together? But they got you. All of them got the same sauce. Come you on, for real? <laughs> Come on, Swell. Smokes, we thought you were good. And um, whatever they got going on over there, something else. This shit's still gonna bust. Damn right. I don't know what this is. Oh, yeah, this is my lettuce wrap pulled pork. Mm. Oh, no, pulled chicken. Mm. <laughs> I'm not on keto, but I love my lettuce wrap stuff. This is gonna be a mess. Oh, this is gonna be a hell of a mess. Nah, yo. My bad, yo. Check to me. Mm. Let me tell y'all something, man. Even though he low key just fucked up my order. When y'all pull up the smokes, bro. When y'all come to Newport News, Virginia, go to smokes. Get you some wings, bro. Top right. five. A little different stuff, a little wrap. Letters wrap, four chicken. Delicious. That sauce looks good too. It is, bro. That's why I'm like, um, man, I need four trying to make that shit. My bad, I got you. I appreciate it, man. The number one, like, defect that can ruin a relationship. Just not being able to communicate effectively. Word. Like, um, you know, girls, they always want to be involved in the loop. You know, even if you're going to be distant for a while, you know, be like, hey, baby girl, I'm going to go do something. Uh, don't think I'm not paying attention to you. Don't think I'm not just putting you off. I just got to work on me for like a few hours, and then I'll hit you back up when I'm done. You know, and then she'll be like, oh, he's not playing games. He's actually out there working on himself, and he's letting me know. Work. So you're keeping her in the loop, and you're still, you know, doing what we do best is work on ourselves. You know what always bug me out, yo? You'll never know that you're bad at communicating until you get in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, no cap, I'm, I suck at communicating, dogs. I'm like, 
I'm an introvert, so it's like I always kind of just want to sometimes be left alone. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that doesn't have to be spoken. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Especially if you're like the only child. Like, Facts. Right. You got siblings? Well, <clears throat> unfortunately, the only sibling I had, Reaper, uh, was my brother. And uh, he passed away, so. Yeah, I didn't know. I'm sorry to hear that, G. No, that's good, brother. But it, it humbled me a lot to realize that when I do become a dad, you know, hopefully God will not do become a dad. Right. Then, um, because I want kids and I want to be able to build a family, and it just it lets me know that building a family is uh, something I want to do because I never had right. my brother or sister or somebody with me. So I am an only child. I never grew up with him. Mm-hmm. So we always grew apart, and then you know, life happened, and now we definitely apart. You know, but until we until we meet again. That's- Crazy, man. Like, I don't know. It's like shit like that, bro. It always like affects people differently because mm-hmm. it's like, like it's almost like you start to yearn for that connection with somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I like I used to get in some situations, dog. But not even with girls, like with like friends and shit like that. That was like, you know what I mean? It wasn't it. You know what I mean? But I just needed somebody to be around me because mm-hmm. it was like I just never had that. Like you said, that, fin- that family connection. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That brother love, man. It was always just me and my mom, bro. You feel me, so? It wasn't really. We got another way we want to. No, nah, brother. Go ahead. I got a whole more thing coming. So I got 15, G. <laughs> and I got some mac and cheese, you know what I'm saying? Work your magic, man. Believe me, I got a plate full. No, I had to learn that the hard way in my past relationship. I didn't realize I was so codependent. And uh, the reason I would get into relationships was because I felt alone and I was not okay being alone. Mm. So then I would get with girls and then I would get, you know, everything start off smooth and then you hit that little rough waters and then I'll start being bad at communicating and then I'll start thinking about, man, why am I focused on my own goals? Why am I focused so much on my girl and my girl's not reciprocating that? Well, because I started getting so codependent on, on like my exes at that point. And it took me a breakup, like a few breakups, to realize that I was codependent, like you said, looking for that connection with somebody. You think you could find that same connection like with like your goal? Like, you think like if you was to take that same energy of like wanting to like have something and like you use that for like say like you go to school or business or something like that, you think you could find that same type of satisfaction? Um, yes, but also, <clears throat> it all depends because you have to, you have to love yourself first before you love somebody else. And I had to love, I had to like legit just every day wake up in the mirror, and I still do this, look in the mirror and tell myself I love myself, mm. and that allows me to love other people. That's true, you know? Because, um, and don't get me wrong, the goals, the goals is definitely important. Without goals, as a man, we, we lose track of what our sights are. We lose track of where we, where we want to go, who we want to do it with, who we want in our lives to support <coughs> us. So, I just think it's, you have, to, you have to love yourself first. Know what you want to do in life, and then go for it. And then if somebody, want, if a significant other wants to tag with you, then they're in for the ride. And it's, it's going to be a good time. I feel like it's like hard to like, like we like people talk all the time about confidence and like self love, but I feel like it's not as like where do you develop that from? You know what I'm saying? Confidence and self love. And I feel like you think about it, it's like it's one thing to say it, and then you can like say that you that you love yourself and you say that you love, but you know what I mean? It's a lot of people that say it and don't truly mean it or truly feel it. You know what I'm saying? No, I feel you. So it's like. I feel like that's like one thing I personally feel that like self love comes from like kind of understanding. I feel like going through hardships and things like that is where you build self love. Because mm-hmm. it builds like confidence in you. Damn right. Like I feel like going through like a real tough situation. Coming through that, 
<clears throat> you're so confident in yourself that you can get back. Nothing can really stop you. No, that's a confidence will probably lead to that so far. That's that's just kinda how I felt, you know what I mean? Cause a lot of people love each other out there, dude. <clears throat> no, that, that's that hardship definitely brings out. Unless they beat me. <laughs> hardship definitely brings out the confidence in one and one in somebody. Um, for me, it was when I was completely alone. Mm. Like, um, I got my little crib, and my ex and I just broke up. My roommate moved out, and then I was left alone in my house, completely alone. That's when I started figuring out that I was, I hated being alone. But then I honestly just started looking at, on YouTube, how to deal with being alone. You know, how to deal with having a, no noise in the house. Right. How to be productive and not be counterproductive just to get away from that feeling that, oh man, I'm alone in my own house, I can't take it anymore, let me just go on the internet and let me go do something. Yeah. So, um, it, it definitely took a while, it took about six months of me just being straight up alone. Don't get me wrong, I started dating and, and trying to get with girls, but I didn't see the true, the true thing until I started just embracing the fact, hey man, you're gonna be alone and it's okay. Word. And then that's when I realized, I'm like, man, you know what? I can have a significant other, and if she's with me, let's go. But if she leaves me, I'm still going to go through my goals, you know? So, like I tell my girl right now, we're in it for the long haul. And if you go, you know, you're jumping on this, uh, you jumping on a train, just be careful, because we're just going to track along. And I don't want to, I'm going to put the same energy in you as I put the same energy in my goals. And then we're just gonna go together. Facts. You know, but if, if you try to backlash me a little bit and tell me, oh, don't work on your goals, focus more on me, then you know, then she's gonna have to take a little seat. She's gonna have to take a little seat in the bench. Yeah. But I work on my goals and my relationship the same. And so far, she's been happy with it. Yeah. That's rare to find, cause you know what I'm saying people in general, you got, everybody wanna be the center of attention almost just like, oh, look at me in that. What made you join this wild ass fucking rich? <laughs> like, out of everything else, what made you like just say, fuck it, I wanna be a Marine? You know what I'm saying? Hey, first of all, shout out to all my Marine brothers out there. Okay. <clears throat> USMC for life, baby. Not bad. Honestly, what made me join the Marine Corps was that damn commercial. All the damn commercials, man. They got a great advertising propaganda thing. But the honest reason is, uh, it goes to that codependency thing. I, I wanted to be involved in something. Mm. I wanted to be, I wanted whatever I wanted to do, I wanted to be important. I wanted to feel like I mattered to something, to somebody. And um, I was, and then going through boot camp, had that same drive, going through uh, MCT, that drive, going to do MOS school, all that good drive, and then you get out and you're like, damn, you're missing something. Yeah. So that was that was me, man. It's like a, a purpose, a sense of belonging. And that's one of the things that uh, you'll see, sense of belonging, pride. And uh, it's good. That's what that's what got me into it, you know? It's a brotherhood like no other and trying to uphold that brotherhood. If you can go back, you had like done active duty or went to college? What do you think is good we got right now? I'm grateful of where I'm at. Where, you know, I'm grateful of where I'm at because I, I, I would like to say I would be better off if I went active, but I just don't know. And I used to think about that all the time and I still kind of do it. It's like, damn, man, I wish I would have went active. I'll probably be a goddamn sergeant by now, fast yeah. sergeant by now, you know. But then uh, also doing this whole reserve thing, getting a job, making sure that you can provide for yourself alone. Man, the Marine Corps doesn't, doesn't help you out when you're in reserve right now. Yeah. You know, you got to pay for your own house 
got to pay for your own food. You don't get a mess hall. You don't get to go out and uh, clothing allowances. Man, we got to put our own clothes on us. Facts. So it's made me way more independent <clears throat> than uh, I ever thought I was going to be. And that's another reason I joined the Marine Corps. I was like, man, I need to learn discipline. I need to learn independence. I need to learn uh, just kind of how to live life. Yeah. But, uh, so if I would have gone active, I, I would have loved to go gone active and get that complete feel for, you know, how the active side of the Marine Corps is. But then again, I'm grateful for where I'm at now. You know, it's crazy, bro. Like, I was thinking about it, like, and every time somebody used to ask me a question, I was just like, you know what I mean? I just wanted the challenge, which is true. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I was like, <clears throat> it's just something that, that's not a lot of people does, and not, I just thought it'd be fun. Mm -hmm. When I look back on it, bro, I look back at who I was before I joined, I've never had really confidence. Like, I used to, my, like, crazy thing was, my, my pops, when, he, when I saw him for the first time after some years, mm -hmm. everywhere I went, I walked with my head down. I didn't like never look. I didn't, I didn't like looking people in their face really, mm -hmm. and like I like I got a little bit more confidence, but I never had that confidence. But I was like I felt like me starting to accomplish it would probably make me more confident in myself. You know what I'm saying? And like me like trying to lose weight and things like that would probably make me more confident. And like it did it to to an extent. Mm -hmm. I mean I definitely you know you leave boot camp, you got some pride in you, shit like that. Yeah right. But it was the same thing I was talking about before. It's kind of like, you say you're confident, but you really don't feel it inside. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You really don't mean that. Because it'll, it'll poke his head out where like you got like, like bitches running all over you type. You know what I mean? Like I had a, uh, it's crazy, dog. I had a, um, I had this shorty and she was just giving me the run around, dog. Like she just fucked with me just for the sake of fucking with me. Mm -hmm. Just like, almost like a, like a little toy. You know what I mean? But like I, me not having to come to myself, I didn't want to stop talking to her because me, she was the finest female I had to ever talked to. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I mean, I, I'm just gonna put up with it. Maybe eventually she'll cool out. You know what I mean? Well, that was me thinking I'm confident, but not really being confident, so I'm taking somebody's shit. Mm -hmm. like, now I don't take shit from nobody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And one of the, mm -hmm. the dopest things, man, like, and one thing I told, like, my uh, my homie at work, I was like, there ain't nothing else that you, that you, like, that's gonna really build some confidence in you and really build a pride in yourself. You demand your respect. You know what I mean? One thing about me, though, I, I can't, like, when you start to demand your respect, it's not like saying that, like, when your boss coming, you know, if you sitting down, and he walks past three other people sitting down, he tells you to stand up. I'm not saying you punch him in the shit. <laughs> don't, don't switch in music, nobody, but, uh -huh. like, you know what I mean? Like, just, like, stand up for yourself, like, hold on, bro. You, you just walk by all these people, man. Yeah. I, I don't think that's fair. And like you feel good about yourself, you stand up to a motherfucker that thinks that they can just do whatever they want to do. Walk all over you. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like I like it used to be when I was younger, and I you know had my temper and shit like that. It used to be my idea of standing up for myself was was, was fucking somebody up. Mm -hmm. and when you get older and you start to be more like, you start to use your mind a bit better. You start to use your words as a weapon. Yep. You're able to just you know instead of me snapping and hauling off and going off on you, I could just. Look you in your face and talk to you like an adult. Whereas mm -hmm. right now you trying to be, you trying to think that you're over top of somebody, but yeah. now we love them. You yeah. know, psychologically we love them. Gonna bring them down. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's something that, and and you know the Marine Corps is dope because I feel like, you know what's crazy? There's a saying that they have for like sports, right? And it used to be like sports don't build character, it reveals it. And I feel like the Marine Corps. Doesn't just reveal your character and exacerbates it and then tells you to fix it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's gonna show, like, whatever, you know, you lazy, if you like a real, if you're like a lazy person, an unmotivated person, it's gonna show you, it's gonna like put a fucking highlight on it. Now, you still have the option whether or not you can change it or not, but it's it's not this where you just, like, it's not really just showing you it. Is giving you is you have like an ultimatum because like otherwise you don't change some of these defects. At the end of the day, your career is not going to you know. Advance anyway. It's not going to advance. Yeah. But the crazy thing about it though, damn, yeah, looks good as a bitch. <laughs> Want some of this? Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, take this right here. You sure? I'll take a piece. I don't I'll take, take nothing. Do your thing. Yeah. Do this, bro. Mm -hmm. 
but like it it kind of it makes it to where it's like yo you gotta you gotta change something but then but it really gears you up for life because if you never change it like you're an individual who's unmotivated about everything if you never change that how the fuck you gonna survive yeah <clears throat> you gotta care about something no that's bad man you brought up change if you're afraid of change you would never level up in life that if you embrace change oh forget about it life is just gonna keep proceeding and that's something that i had um troubles with man i was like damn i can't wait i can't i can't think about change i just want everything to stay the same mm -hmm. everything was getting harder harder and harder and then one day i was just like hold up let me embrace this change let me say that it is okay for things to not go the same way every day and it just feels a lot better so you think sometimes you got forced change even when you think something's all right damn right that's a fact because sometimes you may be doing something you're like all right cool i like it i don't think i need to do anything and then you get comfortable in that situation mm. and then you're like it's so un unconsciously like unconsciously you may do something that you don't even realize the fact that you are complacent right and embrace that change reapers because it's just only going to make you better only going to make us better This mac and cheese wasn't in like that, but I'm fucking it up. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we, we are tearing this up. Fuck it. I haven't even gotten to the burger. Oh. You it's, like pickles, man? Man. Oh, I got a funny ass story to tell you. <laughs> so one day I caught a cramp. I was just laying in bed, I caught a cramp. And my girl's watching TV with me, right? And then she, like, my whole legs, both of my legs seized up and I could not move. For the life of me, I couldn't move. So then I literally just started, I think my girl walked out at that moment, as soon as my legs locked up, because I tried to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. And then I locked up, I stayed in bed, and then I just told my girl, I was like, bang. I like hollered across the house, I'm like, bang. I need some pickles. <laughs> <laughs> And she, at first she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, babe, bring me that pickle jar. I need that pickle juice. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Put the pickle juice in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she came in there with a jar of pickle juice. Like, look, with a pickle juice. She's like, what the hell are you doing this for? I was like, my leg seized up. I can't move. I'm about to die. <laughs> <laughs> So she was like, you just being dramatic. I was like, no, look at my leg. And she was like, oh yeah, you, you definitely you need some, you, whatever you need. Here, here's some pickle juice. So man, I told her, I just downed a little bit of that pickle juice. And about 10 minutes later, after just me laying in bed, I was able to actually get up and stretch out the cramp. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then from then on, I was like, yeah, pickle juice and pickles, life. No, no cap, bro. The worst cramping story I ever had. When I was in college, right? It's about it's about four years ago. It's about to be four years. I was I used to play rugby for a minute, right? Mm -hmm. And we were uh, training for the season to start, and it was a uh, rugby version like Hell Week. Oh, it was man. fucking us up, right, bro? These motherfuckers had us doing like sprints, like like hundred fifty meter sprints for like two hours, right? Dang. I got down. Started doing uh, burpees and shit. They was fucking us up, right? So I'm walking, and the cramp started in my fucking calf. It started after, so I bent down, and as I bent down to grab it, it shot to my thighs, my core, and my yeah, chest. Yeah. It was a full body fucking cramp, and bro. I just I stopped, <laughs> and it's like GTA when they get shot. Oh, <laughs> I just leaned back. And I'm like, oh my god! And it's, it's funny because like people's walking up, and like I'm kind of like, so, you know, you remember the episode of SpongeBob when the dude like like uh, he's just like stuck in a cast, the full body cast. You know what I'm saying? saying I'm and like, yeah, I'm just sitting there, and like people are like, don't fucking touch me! Like I'm <laughs> like, bro, everything hurts so bad, and it's like, and, <clears throat> and it lasted for like maybe fits like ten minutes, damn, and like it went away. It started it started to go away like each body part. 
And as it started going away, I started moving a little bit, but I was still kind of stuck because like the rest of my body was, bro. I got up and everybody was like, oh, you good? I'm like, Nah, <laughs> I'm fucking, so I'm limping, and it, it, it cramped for so long that I was sore in the place that I got cramped up, so oh, I'm kind of like no. limping, right, and my, my big fat ass went to the, uh, <laughs> went to the cafeteria and fucked up a big ass, uh, played a, um, played a, uh, chicken tenders and fries, I ain't gonna lie, let me tell you something, bro, man, that sounds good, man, if, are you in college, bro, if ain't nothing else that they good for, you go to that fry section, Ooh. That got them, man, them, them, them tenders and fries, bro. It was the reason why I fucking gained 30 pounds out there. That shit was Damn. a rat. <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard of the freshman 15, but I ain't know about the 30. 30. Man. <laughs> mm. 30 is a bitch. Mm-hmm. But that was partly because I, like, I fucking sprained my knee in rugby. Mm-hmm. So, fuck me up. Oh, that shit was mean, dog. But man, I was hurt. Damn, I even got, I remember, when we was in boot camp. You remember the, uh, the little thing we got crawling in the, uh, the bar wire and shit? Mm-hmm. But I was calling none of that shit. And I, and I caught a cramp from like my chest down to my waist. So I'm sitting there with my, sit, with my face in the dirt. This motherfucker comes up, he's like, start moving. I'm like, I can't, I can't move. And so <laughs> he's like, all right. You start kicking your sand on me, I'm like, God damn it, bitch. <laughs> I'm like, I really can't move. <laughs> I was mad as shit. So I started like like kind of like like jumping up like a caterpillar. Cause like my my, my, my fur was so bad. And he's like, yeah, it's moving out. Like, man, I'm hurting, dog. I got out that shit. And you know, you can't get up right away because you gotta like keep yeah. down. So when I got up, I kind of stood up. And he started running towards me like, God damn it, I jumped back down to the floor. <laughs> but he was like, you gotta, you gotta like, bro. I'm like, no, bro, I'm like, God damn. This is Reaper training. Oh. Munchy mics. We don't chase dreams, we hunt goals. Catch you next time.